As we come to meditation and mindfulness, this sitting, bring yourself to your seated position, if that's where you are, or your lying down position, or your standing up position, wherever you are today, just adjust yourself. At this point, you're all fairly experienced. So you know that your feet have to be touching the floor. Your hands have to be resting comfortably. Palms up or palms down are in a mudra. Your sit bones have to be in contact with the chair or wherever you are. Your knees have to be lower than your hips if you're in a cross-legged uh, uh, lotus position. Your spine, your back spine must be tall and dignified like a mountain. Your shoulders are relaxed. You begin to sense your eyes closing if you can. The back of your neck gets longer. The crown of your head strives to the sky. And you feel a sense of the body. And this is where we're going today. Just feel a sense of what you're finding as you adjust into your mindfulness meditation seat. Just notice what's there. Don't change anything. No judgment. Just notice. Remember, paying attention on purpose without bias or judgment. And there's something I'd like to add into that is no pursuing anything or rejecting anything. That's without bias and judgment. It, whatever you find in your seat, in your body, in this moment, in your space, it just is. And just be with that. And start to focus intentionally on your breathing. The air traveling in and out of your body wherever that might be, through your mouth, your nose, combination, however it is. And just sense what that is, who you've brought here today, who's resting in this position, in this body, Check yourself out. And if you fall upon any tension or feeling or thought that's disturbing or something that's pleasant, just notice it. Label it and come back to your breath for the first few moments of silent practice.
I'm going to share a short reading by Thich Nhat Hanh to set up our meditation on emotions and feelings as our object. As you continue to notice your breath, just let these words float by you. There is a river of feeling in every one of us. Pleasant feelings, unpleasant feelings, and neutral feelings. They come one after another, like drops of water in the river. As we sit and the river of feelings runs through us and it's tempting to let a strong feeling pull us downstream. Instead, we sit on the riverbank and observe the feelings as they run through us. We can name them. Oh, this is a pleasant feeling. Oh, this is a painful feeling. Oh, this is neither. It's just a feeling. We can do the same with very strong emotions like anger or fear. Oh, this is fear. Oh, this is anger. Behind every feeling is a strong emotion. Naming can be the first step to giving us some distance from our feelings so that we can see a feeling as just a feeling and that it is impermanent. A feeling comes and a feeling eventually goes. So in the first part of practice, see what happens in this moment, in this next period of silence as you do exactly that, you notice, you become aware of a sensation, a feeling, a thought, not a thought necessarily, but the thought can trigger a feeling, just a feeling. What are the feelings? And some of the things that we can feel are happy and some are not so happy. We can be joyful and glad and calm or we can be worried and anxious and angry, relieved or tense, safe or not safe, slow or fast. funny or irritated, cheerful or depressed. So just notice. See if you can become intimate with your feelings right now. What are you feeling? And always remember that if this is difficult, if if this doesn't resonate, just return to the mindfulness of your breathing. That's your anchor. So go ahead and practice.
Now, having observed yourself and whatever feelings you have found, take a moment to find a painful memory, but nothing really heavy yet. We want to start out this, this journey not too taxing. So something that was maybe irritating recently, just pick something that was unpleasant and keep it in your memory and see what visual image it might provoke. And then find a pleasant emotion. Retrieve a memory or a visual that evokes something pleasant and that pleases you. And in both these cases, see if you can pick a visual image that provokes either feeling painful, difficult, or pleasant. Now let's examine the memory that is painful or difficult and see if you can contact the texture of the feeling. If someone asked you to describe the feeling of the emotion, how would you describe it? and see if you can fully put your attention on it just as it is without judgment without being pulled by it just describing it It might be helpful to feel that particular emotions temperature or texture or its location in the body. Is it lodged somewhere in your body? It can be easy to do this or not so easy. Just do your best to be present with the unpleasant emotion or feeling. If your mind wanders, then just simply bring it back and don't label it with anything, no judgment. It's not right or wrong. Oftentimes, an emotion or a feeling takes us into a story or a thought. 
When the thoughts arise, notice them. Notice that you're thinking and bring yourself back to the feeling. This can be very challenging. But if you really allow the feeling just to be itself, it can be very freeing actually. Just be curious and explore this unpleasant or difficult feeling. Now we're going to do the same sequence, but we're going to choose a pleasant feeling. Go back to what you may have encountered in the first part and choose the memory of a pleasant feeling and see if you can make it into a picture of some kind, a visual. And recall anything that arises or appears in the memory 
and make it into a visual. Being aware of the pleasantness and place your attention on the feeling of it. See if you can, again, be aware of its texture. Or if someone asks you to describe the feeling, how would you describe it? Just fully put your attention on that feeling itself without, as we said, getting pulled, without rejecting or um, accepting or pursuing. And once you have that, you might find it helpful to really explore and examine the feeling, take its temperature, its texture, its location in the body. Certainly with a pleasant feeling, it might be a little easier, but maybe not. And just be open to whatever you find. And again, if your mind starts to wander, just gently bring it back without striving of any kind, no judgment. no story, no thinking. Just notice the, this pleasant experience, feeling, feeling, feeling. And you may find with a positive feeling that it's a little easier to be open, to have your heart open a bit. And this is how compassion, specifically self-compassion, because you're only with your own feeling, not another. This is only about you. This is how we can open to compassion for ourselves. So see if you can explore this landscape with a positive or pleasant feeling.
let's bring the anchor of today's sit full circle. So as we opened the discussion today, it was about how life is just life. There's always going to be something. <laughs> There's always going to be a feeling. There's always going to be a sensation. And no amount of my talking is going to change that. Or you coming and sitting here, being still, paying attention on purpose. It's a misunderstanding that in order to meditate, we have to clear our minds first or be still first. No, the meditation itself is the mindfulness of noticing who we are and what is happening in any given moment. So this is the opportunity to realize what and how and when you feel what you feel. And they are fluid and dynamic, just like water like the river and the stream. They go in and around the rocks, under the branches, through the earth. And that's how our feelings are. The hard part is that we often turn the feeling into a frozen object in a way and we invest in the truth of them. And as a result, they have power over us. So mindfulness and meditation is about training, training your puppy over and over again, coming back noticing without judgment, without attachment, without pursuing, without rejecting, pushing away. We just simply notice. And we train this way of responding to ourselves by sitting still, stilling the body, stills the mind. And that's why we practice to get used to the push pulls, the river flowing. Sometimes it's strong, sometimes it's soft. Sometimes it's a little a wavy, sometimes it's completely still. And that's life. So instead of reacting to a feeling or a strong emotion, whether pleasant or unpleasant, we just watch. And we become knowledgeable about ourselves. So in the last part of practice, the last moment of silence, see if you can understand what you just found out about yourself. See if something happened something changed, some more generous kind of understanding of yourself, compassion for yourself, whatever you found in either circumstance, pleasant 
or unpleasant or neutral. And open your heart to you, to whatever you found. Knowing ourselves in this way intimately opens up many possibilities, new choices, new ways of navigating the daily events, feelings, thoughts, experiences that we have as human beings. And to remember that we always have a choice. As we always do, we thank ourselves for being here, just for showing up, for sitting, listening to a teacher talk and give you instructions about how to get to know yourself a little bit better, being more mindful. Thank yourself. Thank your mind and your body for what they offered you. Honor the stillness that you have achieved and treasure your spirit for its willingness. And in the practice of metta, which means loving kindness, you might repeat silently after me, may I be happy, may all beings be happy. May I be free from suffering, may all beings be free from suffering. May I experience joy in the happiness of others. May all beings experience joy in the happiness of others. May I be safe and free from harm. May all beings be safe and free from harm. May I have a clear mind. May all beings have a clear mind. May I experience joy, love, wonder, and wisdom just for today. So take this into the rest of your day with you and know that it's always available to you by simply stopping, taking a conscious breath in stillness and focusing inward. And when you hear the sound of the bell, allow yourself, don't see if you cannot jump up and run on to the next thing. See if you can just hold it for a good 60 seconds before you move. Blessings and Namaste.